Greetings, folks. Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about teaching demography and population change using Web GIS or Web Geographic Information Systems tools and data. This is part one of three. Teaching and learning about demographics and population change in an effective, engaging manner is enriched and enlivened through the use of web mapping tools and spatial data. Now, these tools, enabled by the advent of cloud-based GIS technology, bring problem solving, critical thinking, and spatial analysis to every classroom, instructor, and student. Several developments make this the ideal time for educators to embrace these tools and data sets for teaching these topics. First, population patterns change over space and time, providing the perfect data and themes for investigation using 2D maps and 3D maps in a GIS environment. Second, WebGIS is a platform, it's a platform enabling the maps and applications to be served, shared, saved, and embedded into presentations and multimedia in a collaborative learning environment. In addition, analytical and cartographic tools have migrated to the web, enabling their use on any device at any time using only a standard web browser. Third, the open data movement places an array of rich, varied demographic data sets from the local scale to the global scale in the hands of educators and students. These data include those from the U.S. Census Bureau and other national statistics agencies. Fourth, GIS was created to be a tool to investigate real-world issues, and therefore, teaching with GIS is conducive to a multidisciplinary, problem-solving learning environment using real data. Because modern web GIS platforms are open for anyone to contribute, data quality runs the gamut from poor and or a complete lack of metadata to an authoritative, curated, well-documented sources. Therefore, I believe students need to be critical in using online maps, examining the source, date, author, and other pertinent information. With the, with the flood of information available today, students also need to be able to deal with the limitations and the benefits of working with and managing data. These tools provide a way of exploring a body of content knowledge and the geographic perspective identified as essential to primary and secondary education by the National Academy of Sciences. The fact that these maps are interactive and often include a temporal component helps students learn about fundamental themes of geography. Number one, that the Earth is changing due to natural and human-caused forces. Number two, interconnecting systems affect the Earth, the carbon cycle, the ocean currents, weather and climate, land use pressure, population dynamics, and trade and commerce, to, just to name a few. The number of maps and data layers available for teaching about dem demographics and population change extend beyond the scope of this video and my related article. So let's focus on eight resources and methods. First of all, examining world population and demographic data by country with the living atlas of the world. Wow, amazing. Number two, examining population dynamics using the season map viewer. Number three, examining demographic patterns in selected cities using the urban observatory. Number four, comparing world population density, latitude, altitude, and ecoregions. Number five, examining regional change with satellite imagery using the Landsat lens. Number six, investigating local changes with historical maps and imagery. Seven, examining demographic relationships and trends at the local scale. And finally, eight, examining population trends over time and by country with Gapminder. Each investigation includes the map resource, but space permits only a few questions as examples. The educator is encouraged to use these questions as a, as a, as a springboard for further investigations. Each of the following investigations begins with the whys of where. For example, why are cities located where they are? How can they be uh, affected by surrounding climate, landforms, proximity to oceans. After asking geographic questions, students acquire geographic resources, they collect data, they conduct analyses, and arrive at conclusions. They become proficient in using geographic tools, but more important, they learn about how maps work and how to communicate with maps, acquire media fluency, gain critical thinking skills, 
and learn about population. And finally, may I add, they're also enabled to be change agents in their community. Now that I know about this issue, what can I do about it? So let's begin our eight investigations. First of all, examining world population and demographic data by country using the Living Atlas of the World, the Living Atlas of the World. The Living Atlas of the World is a curated and growing body of content maintained and curated by ESRI, but with a whole wide variety of sources from local to global scale, covering a multitude of scales and from a multitude of organizations, government, private, nonprofit, academia. Population growth, ethnicity, density, cities, and other themes can be quickly accessed combined with other layers queried and used in presentations. Many of the layers contain data extending back in time. Others have forecasted growth and demographics into the future. Second investigation, exploring population dynamics via the NASA CDAC season global population estimation web mapping application. That's a big that's a big acronym, but it's a new web mapping service from the NASA CDAC, the Socioeconomic Data and Application Center, and CISIN, C-I-E-S-I-N, the Center for International Earth Science Information Network, provides the educator, researcher, and student with a valuable, easy-to-use tool to examine the distribution and demographic characteristics of the world's population. Population, demographics, and pyramids, population pyramids, can be calculated for any user-defined area, allowing regions to be easily compared, opening the door for research as to the reasons those differences exist and implications for the future. Compare, using this tool, how population growth will occur in places with a younger population, such as northern India, uh, to that of central Japan, and the impact of population growth on natural resources, infrastructure, and city size. Thanks.